17 and a half years old when I joined the Royal Air Force. We were recruited from Jamaica. It's when we came to England, then we take intelligence tests, medical tests and all that. The, the, the boys from Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados and the other islands, they all take the, the troop ship in Trinidad. And it came to Jamaica. We had Canadian soldiers came down to in, in Jamaica to train us. Can you remember how many people were there roughly? That's I mean, how many young men were you with? Oh, maybe about 500 or more. Did anybody from your district go? Oh, yes. Um, no, at least uh, he was older than us. He used to be a teacher at Crossroads in Port Antonio. And then one of the Harris brothers joined, joined up. And um, Jocelyn Hay, of course, they heard, you know, what was happening at all. Come to join. You, so you sound as if you thought it was very exciting, weren't you? Of course. We, we, but war is to do with blood and death and you could have been killed. It was. It would be an, an adventure. We were young, energetic and it, all that. England is at war. We're going to join. What did your mum and dad think about you joining up? They wish me luck and, and uh, I should do what as I'm, I'm told to do, you know. And I used to correspond with my mom, I used to write to her every month. Was she very worried? No. Oh, no. She wasn't worried that she would lose her last child? No. Oh, no. And from Jamaica, we leave the island. And we stopped at Havana, Cuba to take citrus fruits on and get water out for the cruise ship. And um, we sailed from there and to New York, into New York, and um, from there to um, Newport News, Virginia in the United States. About a, about a month or uh, more waiting for um, a convoy coming from America because in those days a troop ship couldn't travel on its own. The, the enemy submarine is out there in the Atlantic because we in the Caribbean Sea, Atlantic, waiting um, Merchant ships, merchant navy, they have to wait until a convoy is ready. All 200 ships in a convoy coming from North America to England. So we waited in America and that when the convoy was ready and the goods from the Americans to Britain were put on the, on the troop ship. Then from there we come into Glasgow, up the River Clyde, Glasgow, military bond and the quay side playing while we're marching down and the um, Salvation Army serving us hot tea and cake at the quay side and we were in the UK. And when we came to England, then we did eight weeks of basic training on the east coast of Yorkshire, overlooking the North Sea. Finally, was said used to be a Butlin's holiday camp, but we went to the war. The ministry um, rented from the Butlin's because it could be no holidays, you see, no holidays, and until after the war. Larry Constantine then, he came from the Air Ministry, seconded as liaison officer, 
and he told us, he says, your hair is part of the, the greatest empire since the Romans. And you must do as you are told. And when the war is finished, you'll be trained and sent back to your respective homeland. Did you experience any discrimination? Um, no. But that was after the war. But during the war you Not didn't? during the war. No. Oh, no. No, no, no. No discrimination during the war. There was a war on. Everybody's geared to the war. The dead about flight of tenants. On. He, he did approximately um, 50 hours. Escort as a navigator, he escort the bombers and then they dropped the bombs. And then he got all his aircraft back to base. And he told me this um, when he got into the officer's mess, what was on then? And the only officer that stopped with me is the commanding officer. So they just ignored him? Because of the colour of his skin? What would you say it was like after the war? So the war finished and what was it like for you? Oh, it was wonderful. Because everybody would shake hands with you, buy a drink, you go in the pub and they didn't allow you to buy any drinks. It was wonderful. Never, never dreamed in that way. They were wildest dreams. We didn't expect that kind of um, reception after the war. They'd say, it's time you boys go home, the war is finished. And we say, we came here to fight, to defend you. You don't tell us when to leave. We'll all leave in good time. So what happened when you demobbed and you tried to get a job in England? What happened? There was no discrimination against us as ex-service men. They had an um, EVT scheme, Educational Vocational Training. And I graduated as machine shop production precision engineer. One were technical college, and then I got a job in a factory. So you could find housing and... Yes, we, we were given preference over the civil, civilian, being an ex-service man. Oh yes, no problem, as an ex-service man. Uh, we got special treatment. But we were service men and the war was on. So after the war, the different, then there, there was race discrimination that with the, the civilians coming in. I never come across any. Luckily, I never. But I know other people who, but the servicemen would get along much better. You know, the fact that we were here before, they decide what they want to do and they just get on with it. You'd say you've had a good life. Yes. I had a good life.